Tomul, despite its name, was never that obvious to me. Maybe it's because I've never spent the 15 minutes required to go through its specification, never parsed it to configure my own custom app, never even played with it besides copying the snippets from cargo and poetry docs. So maybe it is obvious as in you can use it without knowing anything about it? But I'm a naturally curious person, so I finally went through the spec, built a tiny open source visualizer and made this video. So in 5 minutes you'll know everything about Toml. Oh, and if you don't know what Toml is, it's a format for config files. Like a better, more standard .ini, definitely more readable than JSON and even a YAML, also much simpler than YAML. Toml is structured around a single table. Think of it as a JavaScript object, Python dictionary or Rust struct. So if a Toml is transformed into a JSON, it always starts with a curly bracket. You can assign values to keys of that table just as if you defined new Python variables by using a single equals sign. Oh, and comments start with a hash, again just like in Python. But the most standing out characteristic of Toml are headers. Those are used to define additional tables or even arrays of tables. There's no official name for the header together with what it annotates, but we will call it a section. Each Toml file is split into the top level section and additional sections with headers. Neither the top level section nor the additional headers are required. While the top level section is part of the top level table, all the other sections are put into the tables of their own and then added to the top level table using the section name as their key. If the header is wrapped in two square brackets, it can be repeated and will be parsed into an array of tables. Values are on the right side of each equals sign. Let's quickly go through the allowed value types. Strings are surrounded by double quotes. All Unicode characters are allowed, but some need escaping. Multiline strings look similar to those in Python, but the starting new line is ignored. You can end a line with a backslash to ignore all the following white space. Literal strings are surrounded by single quotes and there's no escaping in them. What you see is what you get. No single quotes allowed inside. Multiline literal strings also exist. Again, no escaping, only up to two single quotes in a sequence. Integers can optionally start with a minus for negative numbers or a plus for really positive numbers. Hexadecimals, octals and binary are prefixed with respectively 0x, 0o and 0b. Floats are 64-bit. They start with an integer and then optionally, in this specific order, either a fractional part or an exponent, or both. You can use underscores to make any number more readable. Both underscores and decimal points must be surrounded by a digit on both sides. Booleans are lowercase. Date times can include a standard offset for your favorite time zone. Dates and times are also allowed but only without time zone offsets. Finally, we have arrays and inline tables. Arrays are just what you would expect them to be. Square brackets with values separated by commas. They can span multiple lines. White space is completely ignored. Inline tables, on the other hand, can only span a single line. Unlike JSON, equals sign is used for pairing keys with values. Both inline tables and arrays cannot redefine or in any way interfere with the headers based definitions. The tricky part about Toml are keys. Those can be both on the left side of each equals sign, including inline tables, and in headers. The keys we've used so far are called bare keys and they can only contain ASCII letters and numbers, an underscore or a dash. While it should be used only when absolutely necessary, keys can also be quoted using single line string rules to include other characters. Literal strings are also allowed. But the most important ones are dotted keys. 
Those are very similar to dotted access to attributes in many programming languages, but will implicitly create necessary intermediate tables. So in this example from a Python dependency manager called Poetry, you don't need to first create a tool table or a poetry table to be able to specify your dependencies. Dotted keys work everywhere, but I've mostly seen them used in headers. This also means that in Toml there are different ways to represent the same underlying data. But parsing ambiguity is not allowed, so defining the same value twice, redefining it, or any other way of producing colliding definitions is not allowed and will result in an error. You can define a parent table after implicitly creating it with a dotted key, although you probably want to keep everything in a nicer order but it gets a bit more complicated with array tables. Remember how you can repeat the header multiple times where each section becomes a separate array element? You can nest tables and even other array tables within the original array table by using dotted keys. They will point to the last defined element. So in a way, array table headers affect two regions of a toml. They capture all the keys up to the next header and all nested headers up to the next array element. And now you know everything about Toml. Links to Toml specification, available parsers and my visualizer are in the description. Good luck and don't forget to rewrite all your configs into something that technically works but is clearly a nightmare.